we preview one of the most salacious games in years. Plus, MLB 2K10 cover athlete and baseball superstar Evan Longoria joins us on the show. And we've got exclusive new footage of Brink multiplayer and serious answers to your ludicrous questions. X-Play starts right now. Hello and welcome to X-Play. That's right, recognize. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. And today we're going to do something we haven't done in a really long time. Oh, I'm worried. Yeah, find out what we mean later on. But coming up, we're going to preview Bayonetta, come for the ridiculous over-the-top fighting mechanics, and stay for the sleazy, pervy shots of the titular character. Plus, we'll talk MLB 2K10 with that guy who's on the box. Tampa Bay, Devil Rays, third baseman, all-star, and super rich guy, Evan Longoria. Then we'll have exclusive new multiplayer gameplay of Brink, the shooter that has you playing the role of single-player cannon fodder. We're going to explain why. And we're going to preview Mod Nation Racers, which is kind of what you get if you put Little Big Planet in Mario Kart and one of Seth Brundle's teleportation machines, but without all the AIDS allegories. But first, a look at 2010's strangest game. On the surface, Bayonetta looks like a Devil May Cry clone that's primarily interested in having you leer at its scantily clad lead character. And the game gets a perfect score from semi-respectable video game publications, but Mitsu and Edge. We're very, very confused. Here's a preview. Believe it or not, there is more to Bayonetta than a cosplay-clad woman that gets carted out to video game trade shows. Yes, there's actually a game as well, and here it is. Devil May Cry creator Hideki Kamiya re-enters the world of 3D button mashers with this title that will definitely have fans of his previous creation running for their consoles. Perhaps you're up for the task. At first glance, Bayonetta seems like it's treading some very familiar territory. We've got a gun-toting, larger-than-life central character who finds herself mysteriously embroiled in a celestial battle. Only this time, it's not demons in the sights of her many, many gigantic guns, but angels. Badass, armor-clad angels. As was the case in all of the Devil May Cry titles, the action in Bayonetta appears to border on ridiculous. And trust me, I mean that in the best possible way. Get ready for loads of enemies and big theatrical kills that will probably have you saying, okay, was that absolutely necessary? The answer, however, won't take long to materialize. The kills in Bayonetta match the equally ridiculous scale of everything else. At times, it seems like every battle, even those with your average everyday grunt enemy, are blown up to near boss battle proportions. Basically, it looks like the added go big or go home has been applied to every aspect of this game. Another striking aspect on display here is the way Bayonetta plays physics. Expect to have to look at the world from a lot of different angles. From the mind-bending, rotating level design to set pieces that literally fall away from you as you play, Bayonetta seems to constantly play with and break where you think you are in the world. Even if it seems like you're standing on solid ground, things can change in a heartbeat. It doesn't take long to realize that Bayonetta's developers went out of their way to up the sexy in this title, from the too tight disco suit sported by nearly every female character to the fact that Bayonetta herself basically becomes naked when executing powerful magic, the game is absolutely drenched in sex. I know they're real. Whether or not this will add depth to Bayonetta's title character or simply lead to one-dimensional objectification remains to be seen. You're in no position to decide that. Let's be honest, Bayonetta is a Devil May Cry clone, but judging by the success of that franchise and what we've seen of this title so far, that might not be such a bad thing. Expect much more on this game as we near Bayonetta's release in early January. If she was my librarian, I wouldn't have any late fees. You know what I'm talking about, Morgan? Tampa Bay Rays third baseman Evan Longoria pretty much has this whole baseball thing on lockdown. L let's think about this. He won Rookie of the Year, he's a two-time All-Star, and he just received a gold glove and a silver slugger for the same season. On top of that, he's also the cover athlete for MLB 2K10. I hate this guy. I sat down with Superstar for his take on this year's edition. I am here with Evan Longoria. Evan Longoria at the plate. Let's talk about what's behind us right now. You are the cover athlete, 2K10. How does that feel? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous honor. Um, obviously, big thanks to the 2K Sports guys for bringing me on board. Really happy to just be able to actually 
put some input into a game and be a part of it, it's a tremendous honor. And you're actually also involved in the development of this game, right? And that's taken it way further than most people do. I grew up playing baseball games and playing video games, and aside from being on the cover and being honored with that, I mean, I wanted to take it to a new level and, and kind of throw my two cents in there and make the game better. And this year for me, you know, the big thing with 2K10 is the battle between pitcher and hitter, you know, the competition. There's a high drive, hit deep into left field. This one way back, out of here, a home run. Let's talk about the fans a little bit because this cover, it's unique in a couple different ways. One, that you're on it this year, but two, there are actually six different covers, and this year the fans get to vote as to what cover they want, right? Right, yeah, it's a little bit different. You know, a while back there was rumored to be a leak on what the cover picture was already. And so, you know, these guys turning lemons into lemonade, you know, by kind of turning it around and saying, you know, well, that's not the cover we're going to use, but we have six other covers that, you know, we want the fans to vote. And I got to ask you this, too, and I'm sure you're going to say myself, of course, but when you're playing the game, who are you playing as? I would have to play the Rays, obviously, but if I had to choose another team, probably the Yankees. I mean, they just have... They have so many good players, both offensively and defensively, that it's pretty fun to play a video game with those guys. You obviously are a gamer. What are you playing? I've been playing rock band a lot. Um, guitar, I was big into Guitar Hero, still am, and the Call of Duty Modern Warfare is, you know, those three. I have the new 2K10 hockey game. All their games are great, the 2K10 basketball game. And then my last question to you, man, just on a personal level, how many letters do you get from creepy Desperate Housewives fans asking for signed panties? God, I wish I got more of those and less of what I normally get, but... Um, Dude, those letters are coming from guys. Nah, yeah, I'm sure they are. The day I get a creepy one, I'll give you a call. Sounds good, brother. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me, man. Right, Congratulations man. on the cover. Thank you very much. Cool. Big swing on this one. Chasing it. Warning track wall. Gone a home run. All right, even if you're not a fan of sports games, there's no denying that a Louisville Slugger is an iconic video game weapon. In today's X-List, we count down the top five baseball bats in video games. Coming in at five is Grand Theft Auto 4. If you've ever seen Eastern European with a bat, chances are not a shortstop, probably a Bosnian war criminal. Number four is Dead Rising. Frank West covers wars. You know, and he's also quite the zombie home run. Yeah. Yes, coming in at three is Team Fortress 2. Nothing like a line drive from the Sandman to halt an enemy advance. Number two, Super Smash Brothers Brawl. It's a handy weapon to quickly try to eject your opponents from the arena. But the number one baseball bat in game can be found in Left 4 Dead 2. When you're out of ammo and totally screwed, this thing could save your life. Sage advice, Webb. Coming up on next play, we're going to review the game that highlights the minor leagues of the NBA, NCAA Basketball 10. Come on, no one goes to Kansas for a communications degree. Plus, you do not want to miss our world premiere look at Brink, the shooter that has a whole new take on how you play online multiplayer. Then we're going to preview Mod Nation Racers for the PlayStation 3. It's a kart racer that actually requires some imagination. And learn why a locust breakfast is a great way to start any morning in a very special X-Play Classic. We'll be right back. Welcome back to X-Play. Our viewers are a, uh, they're a passionate bunch and are quick to send thoughtful and endearing correspondence. Ah, now we don't have time to respond to every letter, but today we're going to tackle a few. Let's see what's inside the X-Play inbox. All right, first up is Brian. He is a loyal Sega fanboy, and he wants to know if Shinmu 3 will ever happen. Quote. Can the fine people of X-Play please get the inside info on this must-have release, In quote. Milady? No! Sir. I'm no. really waiting for that we'll Peter Frampton follow-up album. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a well-loved series by, like, the hardest of the hard, hard, yeah. hardcore, and we get asked about this a lot. Um, the first two we weren't exactly big for Sega, and it's a lot of work, and they're I very played, expensive to make. I played Shenmue on the Dreamcast. Ah, the Dreamcast. I know. That's right. It's good times. Oh, good the times. late 90s. Never give up on your so dreams, filled. Brian, except for this one. <laughs> Next up, Justin asks, I was wondering how many episodes of X-Play have both of you done in your career? 
Good career. Question, a hobby. Your career. <laughs> I actually just worked out at the quickie. <laughs> um, well, I mean, as far as X Play goes, it's the exact same for both of us. Right, we actually started X Play on the same day, which was in 2003. I started first on a show called The Screensavers, and I started on that show in 2001. Now, in 1998, I started with GameSpot TV at ZDTV. <laughs> yeah, everyone should remember that. Um, <laughs> I have no idea how many episodes I did because I don't think people took records because it really wasn't so much television as it was a camera near people talking. <laughs> Just well, we're actually going to have our special one hour, 1,000th episode, and that's going to be on February 1st. So we're going to kind of have a nice look back and... A look back at hair. The younger Beautiful days. Skin. Lots of it. Our next question is pretty straightforward. Do you guys think there will be an Assassin's Creed 3? Hmm, hmm, I wonder. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that Ubisoft likes money. Yes, and given the fact that Assassin's Creed 2, at this point, you know, with Assassin's Creed 1, right. has already made more money than Assassin's Creed 1, that would pretty much say between that and the right. ending of Assassin's Creed 2, who, spoiler alert, it's Cliffhanger, um, they're going to, you know, do what... I think the bigger question is, will it stay a trilogy or will they like right. money so much it'll be a quintology? Well, I think they like is money. Call? Oh, yes. Dedicated viewers, thank you very much for your emails. You can always write us at xplay at g4tv.com. Keep it clean. What? If you like Little Big Planet, but you wish it was a kart racer rather than a platformer, okay, it's a very odd and very specific complaint, but if you genuinely do feel that way, you are gonna love Mod Nation Racers for the PS3. Here is a preview. In a season full of action games, we're looking forward to something a little lighter to play around with. And Mod Nation Racers is coming for the PS3. The game is fast and furious with plenty of boost pads, drifts, jumps, and crashes. You get a variety of weapons from shockers to missiles. Obstacles are cute and funny, including porta potties and outdoor cafes. The cartoony graphics could make you think this is a kids only game, but everyone will enjoy it. Taking a cue from Sony's Play, Create, Share slogan, Mod Nation Racers allows you to customize not only your character and vehicle, but also design an entire racetrack from scratch. There are thousands of options for character creation, from cute and cuddly to dark and menacing. The most important aspect that sets Mod Nation Racers apart is the ability to craft your own race course. You get to put in obstacles or let the game do it automatically. And enterprising designers can upload their tracks to the PlayStation Network and let others vote on them. Did you stop or take out? Get moving! The racing might remind you of Mario Kart and the customization feels like Little Big Planet, but the game goes way beyond both. Are you gonna let him get away with that? Keep an eye out for Mod Nation Racers coming into stores in early 2010. Now, if you're picking up NCAA Basketball 10, I hope you're a fan of Kansas or Duke and definitely not the Bruins getting beat by Long Beach. Because if you try to play at your local scrub college, you will be destroyed. Unfortunately, it's one of the many flaws in this year's edition. Here's our review. Actually, I'll be the one to decide that. When you first take a look at NCAA Basketball 10, this should be a good one. You're not going to do that the whole review, are you? Good. The presentation looks great, and March Madness is crazier than Tiger Woods in an SUV at 2 a.m. All right. EA did a wonderful job getting this game to look and feel like an authentic college basketball experience. We got the potential for fireworks here today. And if you know the difference between a zone motion and a four round one, then this game is a slam dunk. What a terrific play! Almost. When NCAA Basketball 10 will have you running some of college basketball's signature offenses just by using a few quick taps, you'll miss a lot of the open shots. With the J, off the mark. And that's just the first feature that has this game coming up a little short. And come up short. I just said that. Yes. Watch out. The shooting in this game is erratic. You can perform the Princeton to Ivy League perfection and still end up with... Shots off. Grabs the board. Yet... 
wild and crazy shots will go down easier then. The defense is a little overroided as well. You can get double digit steals by running the same trap over and over again. Tries to get around the trap, but he can't do it. You also can't choose to play as a smaller school and hope to beat anyone but the Sasso School for the Athletically Challenged. Yes. If you're a college basketball fanatic who likes playing as North Carolina and winning by 30, you'll probably love this game. It's just that the rest of us won't. Yes. NCAA Basketball 10 gets a three. <laughs> Five. Adam Sessler is my dean. Sign me up. When next player turns, we've got an exclusive look at the multiplayer action of Brink. You're not going to see this game play anywhere else, people. Plus, we've got an X-Play classic that any season cog would appreciate. We'll be right back. Welcome back to x -Play. If your day consists of headshotting drones and chainsawing locust scum, a bagel and a glass of orange juice is not a great way to start the morning. Instead, try the delicious breakfast cereal featured in this x -Play classic. Hey kids! Tired of that boring old oatmeal? Yeah. Want breakfast that will send you into diabetic shock? Yeah! Then you need Grains of War. If your kids are going to fight Loki, you need to put some meat on them bones. Call Train! Grains of War is the nutritious new breakfast cereal you kids need to get big and strong like Cold Train, baby. Woo! Contains 3,000% of your daily dose of RDC Yellow Number 2. Now with marshmallows, purple blue max, blue lances, yellow torture barges, and red entrails. I like the red entrails the best. Fun activities on the back of every box. I'm calling a picture of two blood mounts fighting over a corpse. Grains right. of War, full of vitamins and nutrition. Grains of War is made from whole wheat, powdered bullet casings, and slaughterhouse runoff. I don't feel so good. Free prizes. I got a syringe of anabolic steroids. I got a live hand grenade. Grains of War. Will curb starve that appetite? Yeah! Whoa! Go team, Dad! Come on! Part of a balanced breakfast. If the April. Oh, a locust! No! Oh! The game of the world, baby! The game of the world! I don't care whether you're playing Darkest of Days or Modern Warfare 2, shooters always have dumb AI. It happens. But in Splash Sandwich's Brink, don't expect to find clueless enemies during the campaign. That's because you'll be shooting at actual humans. Find out more in this world exclusive look. Brink is the new shooter from the makers of Quake Wars and it's taking the competitive objective-based multiplayer concept in new directions. In addition to the smart system that lets you move through the environment with ease and agility, you can customize your character to use whatever combination of class, skill sets, and weapons you prefer. Anything you unlock or earn offline can be taken online and vice versa. And you can change classes and loadouts on the fly using stations like this one. The class you're using will determine what you can do to help your team besides just shooting people in the face and racking up XP. Sometimes you'll be offered quest-style objectives that send you off to perform a specific action to progress the mission. Here are engineer class abilities let us fix the crane needed to move our droid buddy to the next area. Brink offers a full campaign experience, whether you're playing solo, co-op, or competitively. The campaign has two sides, rebellion and security. Whichever side you pick, you can play alone with seven AI teammates or with online buddies. Do not fire unless they fire upon you. The twist is that you can also play against human opponents in the actual campaign. Your eight opponents can be either AI-controlled enemies or humans who are playing the other side of the campaign. It's possible to play through Brink Story entirely against humans, not the computer. If you're not a fan of online, on the other hand, you can play it entirely solo and still unlock all the same customization goodies as online players. 
There's still a lot left to reveal about Brink, but what we've seen so far is promising. After all, this is an objective-based multiplayer shooter from the company that arguably knows it best. Look for Brink to hit store shelves in Fall 2010. Coming up on X-Play, learn why being a smuggler is just as fun as a Sith Lord. We'll have the latest on the MMO that takes you to a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars The Old Republic. Plus, Nazi-occupied France needs liberation and some color. Find out if the cause is worth taking up in our review of the Saboteur. Then we'll have more exclusive gameplay of Brink, the 2010 shooter that breaks all the rules. And we'll have you look at online gaming in a whole new light. And if you can't look for intel while saving Burger Town, we've got a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 cheat that'll make your life a whole lot easier. All that and more, don't miss it. You know, we're definitely going to see the review of Saboteur. It's very interesting the way they've sort of added this sort of surreal mechanic into, yeah. you know, a more standard gameplay mechanic. And it sounds like, okay, World War II France doesn't sound exciting, but then right. after Assassin's Creed 2, I like going...